So good morning, everyone, and thanks for attending the session. Uh, you are here for either one or two reasons. You've heard of Power BI, you're interested in what it, what it can do, and you're, you're keen on getting started with it, or you've already started working with Power BI and you're wondering what else you can do with it. So if that is the case, you've come to the right place. Um, I'm going to be giving you a quick intro on Power BI, what sorts of things you can do, what it can connect to, how powerful it is. Uh, and then in the end, I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to create some really basic visualizations. Um, there will also be a space for a Q&A session at the end. And I'll also be showing you what sort of end results um, you, you can actually have with Power BI. So the sorts of reports and interactions you can create with it. So without any further ado, um, let's get started. I'm going to quickly swap to my presentation. And hopefully this is working So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to be talking about Power BI and how to install it on your local machine. Uh, I'm going to have a quick overview of import versus direct query and the live connection. Then we'll do uh, a basic report building. I'll show you a sample data set for Microsoft Power BI that anyone can ac get access to. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session. And there's also an appendix at the end of the pre this presentation that I will attach to this chat with the load of useful links uh, for you to peruse at a later time. So. How to get Power BI. Uh, Power BI is a freely downloadable 32 slash 64 bit desktop application that you can get from Microsoft website. Um, there are two versions. There's a normal desktop version, which is free, and there's a Power BI optimized uh, for Power BI report server. This should be the one that you should be um, getting a hold of if you need to um, if you need to publish reports to our Power BI report server, you'll need the specific version. So. Power BI combines the power and the potential of Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View. If you used Excel before, you should be familiar with these terms. Um, there is a dedicated BI workflow, and the specialty is interactive visualization and analysis. Um, the main output, of course, is going to be interactive reports, and it allows you to effortlessly publish interactive visual reports to the users of Power BI. Power BI gets updated on a monthly basis. Our server gets updated on a quarterly basis, in which case you'll be getting a new version every three months with a, a specific change log. So what does it enable you to do? You get fast and easy access to your data. It allows you to do data discovery and exploration, including journalism. It gives you insights from many devices. And when I say from any device, it means your laptop, your desktop, and hopefully in the near future from your mobile and tablet. Um, it allows you collaboration across the organizations, and anyone can visualize and analyze data at a glance. So what does Power BI Report Server actually do? So Power BI Report Server is a link between your Power BI desktop application and the server. So in Power BI, you'll be creating reports, you'll be creating dashboards and custom visualizations, and Power BI will be housing these and presenting them with role level security and various refresh schedules. So what are the key benefits of Power BI? It, it gives you the capability to pre-build dashboards and reports for popular SAS solutions. It also gives you real-time dashboard updates. It contains secure live connections to your data sources, on-premises and in the cloud with role-level security. It's good for intuitive data exploration and it uses natural language query. We're talking about tax. And it's integrated with familiar Microsoft products and utilizes commitment for scale and availability in Azure. So that means that you can connect to data sources in Azure and they'll be fast and reliable. And last but not least, it allows for fast deployment, hybrid configuration, and secure and integrated with existing IT systems. So we've already got all that enabled within our configuration in the Power BI report server. So this is a quick overview. I'm not going to be um, talking extensively about it, but in essence, this is just a quick graphic of uh, what the data sources are, the sort of Power BI service, and what it enables you to do. Um, so later on, when you get a hold of this presentation, feel free to have a look at it. <clears throat> so what sort of data sources does Power BI allow you to connect to? Well, there's a ton of them. You know, you can connect to files and folders, and you can automate all of that. You can connect to various databases, as you can see, you've got your usual SQL access, SQL Server, Oracle, IBM DB2, MySQL. Um, it allows you to connect to Azure, which is really, really good, because like I said before, it allows you for, to, to work really fast with Azure machines. If you're using SAS solutions, it allows you to connect to all that. And there's other stuff that you connect to, including web API, SharePoint lists, Hadoop files, so big data, Active Directory, et cetera, et cetera. So Power BI has got a wealth of sources that you can connect to, and I don't think you'll be stranded for, for options. 
<clears throat> so now we'll quickly talk about the main differences between import versus direct query or a live connection. Bearing in mind, this is not going to be an, an exhaustive uh, comparison list. There is one at the end of the appendix. But in essence, <clears throat> what are the major differences? So if you're importing data into Power BI, you'll find that is sort of the most reliable solution to do it. And why is that? It gives you the fastest possible connection. In essence, when you're connecting and you're doing an import, the data will be stored within the PBX file. And it, whenever you load this file from Power BI report server, all the data will be loaded onto the RAM. So if the data gets loaded from report server onto the RAM, it's going to be the fastest way to do this. It gives you full access to Power BI. So you'll be able to create full DAX expressions and full Power Query transformations. And last but not least, it allows you to combine data from different sources. What are the disadvantages? You might reach a Power BI file size limitation. So what does this mean? If you connect to massive data sources, and I have an example the other day where I was connecting to, to various, uh, various, various databases and the file reached a limit of about 350 megabytes. Now, bearing in mind, when you're publishing this report onto the server, anyone that accesses it will have to cache part of that data. And the bigger your report is, the, the longer it'll take to load. Now, if you've got a fast connection, 350 megabytes is not gonna be a lot, but if you're running it through a VPN, it, we start getting into various problems. So we get onto the next stage, which is direct query. Direct query allows you to do large scale data source um, support. There is no size limitation, and it allows you to have pre-built models and some data sources. So the disadvantages are, you have very limited and power query functionality. The DAX is also very, very limited. And you cannot combine data from multiple sources, meaning that if you connect to one direct query, that is the only source you're able to use. And again, that is the slower connection type. So if you do a direct query, there needs to be a lot of optimization done in the other end. And last but not least, a live connection. So what are the advantages of a live connection? Again, a large, large scale data source. Um, it, so there is no size limitation. Um, many organizations are have SAS models built, and this also means you can collect to connect to tabular cubes and, and multi-dimensional cubes. It supports report level measures, and MDX or DAX analytical engines can be used. Again, disadvantage is there is no power query. You cannot combine data from multiple sources. Again, like direct query, if you do a live connection, you can only connect to that specific source. So you're relying on your friendly DMA um, DMA person to do the optimization and the creation of all the images for you at the end, and it's slower. So it, you need to do a lot of performance tuning in order to get to the same performance level as import. So now we get to the exciting bit. I'm going to be showing you really quickly how easy it is to use Power BI, how to create, um, how to create various visualizations, and then showing you what a report will look like once you start getting more familiar with it. So I'm going to quickly swap on to another screen, and I apologize, it's going to be a bit of a blip. I'm going to be sharing my whole screen at the moment. So um, is my screen showing at the moment? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. So I'm going to open a new instance of Power BI, and hopefully it doesn't take too long if you just give me two seconds. So in essence, I'm, what I'm trying to show you is the step from opening Power BI, creating a data source, and then creating various visualizations. So every time you open Power BI, you'll be given the, the, the splash screen, the intro screen. So you can connect to recent data sources. You'll find that I've got several files here that I've already used in the past. But what we're going to do is we're going to get data. <clears throat> Actually saying that, there's already a sample data set here. So you can import data from Excel, SQL Server, there's all the various sources they can do, but Power BI gives you access to a sample data set. So let's do that. So you can load sample data. And what Power BI will do is we'll grab a quick sample uh, and it'll load it for you. So this is the navigator. The file is called financialsample.xlx. And you choose the table financials. And what Power BI will do is give you a quick view of what it looks like. You got segment, you got country, you got products, you got various things here. And if you look at the data set, and if you think that this data looks good and you can load it, you can go ahead and just load the data. So here we go. So as you can see, once the data is loaded, you get access to three tabs here on the side. You get access to the relationship tab. The relationship tab at the moment only shows one table. And for those of you that are familiar 
uh, with these, you'll find that at the moment there's only one table here. But if you add several data sources, you can start establishing connections between the various fields. So one to one, one to many, many to one, many to many, et cetera, et cetera. So you can do all that. You also get access to the data tab. The data tab gives you insight into what your data looks like. It also allows you to edit the initial query that brought this data to be in Power BI. So if you right click on this data set here, you can edit the query and you'll tell you exactly where the data comes from and the various steps that have been applied to this data. So as you can see at the moment, uh, what Power BI did was it navigated to a specific source. So it chose the source, it navigated to a specific tab, which is tab uh, called financials, and then it changed a type, which is, it must have been a value type around here somewhere, in which case you can explore and see what happens. Now, there's a lot of stuff that you can do here, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna delve deep into, but <clears throat> the modeling, the, this, this Power Query editor allows you to do very, very wondrous things, including uh, converting data into, um, into flat data. It allows you to select your data, and if you have a lot of fields to your right, it allows you to convert it into a measure and a value, which is really easy to use once you get into creating filters and slices. It allows you to correct your data and remove null fields and errors. It allows you to create new columns. There's all sorts of things you can do here. You can transform one of those amazing Excel files that you get from publications into something that's digestible by Power BI. And once you create that, because all the steps get recorded here, whenever you refresh that file or you load that file again, all the steps are going to be taken and then that file just gets corrected for you. You don't need to do it every time. So now let's get into the exciting bit, which is creating visualizations. So you're probably thinking how easy it is to create a visualization. Well, it's very easy. Say for example, you want to do an analysis on sales. Okay, so you can see there's, there's sales here on the side. So how do you do it? Okay, just grab the field, drop it there and see what Power BI does. Here we go, there's sales. Now, at this point in time, this really doesn't tell you a lot. It's just, it's just literally just summing a field and saying, well, in terms of sales, we had 180 million, 726, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where it starts getting interesting. So I want to see sales on a timeline. Okay, we got a date there, there's a date field. Why don't we drop that there? So Power BI was clever enough to look at the date field and say, that is a date. And I'm gonna create hierarchy for that specific date. So there's your year, your quarter, your month, and your day. Okay, by date, there we go. Um, when you add a date and because there's an hierarchy for it, Power BI gives you a split at the highest level, but that's not a problem. Let's go down a bit and let's expand it. There we go. So all of a sudden you've got sales by date, but this, this looks a bit, you know, it just doesn't look good. Usually when you do something like this, you wanna see on a line chart. Can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got this at the moment as a cluster column chart because Power BI assumed the best scenario for this for this type of thing. But let's change it into a line chart. Oh, look at that. We've got sales on a timeline with the various dates right here at the bottom. And it's, you know, it's looking interesting. That's absolutely fine. So what if I wanted to add a trend and a forecast to this? Well, you know, you can just quickly go into the ana analytics tab. So you've got your visual selected. Let's go into analytics and let's add a trend line to this. As easy as that. Feel free to customize your lines. It's not a problem. You can change your colors. What about forecasting? Well, because we got the date field, we can do time intelligence, in which case, well, let's go to the forecast and add a forecast line. Now, this looks a bit wonky. Power BI is not very clever when it comes to forecasting. It tries its best, but its best is not the best. So let's change the forecast length for six months. So if we do six, months here and let's do a seasonality of 12 points because we know this is on a, on a monthly basis and let's see if this works here we go that's that's a much better forecast okay so we've done this 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 was a very very quick line chart with forecasting and trend what if you wanted to see the various countries and how they are doing in terms of, of sales not a problem so we can either copy and paste this because we already got a line chart or we could quickly just quick drag and drop here and just do that again so again, we got sales. There's a country run here somewhere. So the country is going to be our legend. And let's grab the date and drop it on the axis. So, and let's change this into line to line charts. Uh, and let's expand it. Okay, there we go. So these are the various countries. This is how they're doing in terms of sales. And note that at the top, you got your various countries there. So if you wanted to focus on a specific one, you can. And note that at the top, that changes accordingly. All of these are connected together. So whenever you select on one, it also happen on the other. 
So two visuals, they already give you some insight into this. That's pretty good. Let's let's drop those at the top. Now we've got countries here. What about seeing them on a map? That looks quite nice, doesn't it? So okay, let's let's quickly do that. Let's convert this chart into a map. So I quickly did a control C and control V. You can do a copy and paste. And I'm going to change this into a map. So I want to do here we go, there's a map visualization. Let's see if Power BI is clever enough to tell me how this works. I'm going to remove, uh, uh, let's have a look, date, there we go. So as you can see, this is already looking quite good. There's your, there's your countries then, there's your sales, there's Canada, there's United States, and you can see by the size of the bubbles, which you can adjust if you want to. So if you, know, if you wanted to adjust the size just so, um, so it looks a bit better. You can change this into, I don't know, say, let's get this to 15, for example. It gives you a bit more focus on it. And again, same as before, each of these interacts with each other. So if we were to select one of these, you'll notice that your visualizations change accordingly, which is quite nice. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this now. So, you know, if I wanted to show on the map um, together with the tooltip, so if you hover over, you can see their France and their sales are that also you notice the sales hasn't got the the thousand limitator so you can change that really quickly if you go on to sales for example and you select that field and you can quickly at the top set your field and how you want to do it now power bi when it loads the data tries to do its best with it but you know let's let's quickly amend that and you'll see that all of a sudden the sales are looking a bit better say you wanted to add a tooltip to this to also show the profit to it well if that's easily done so if we grab the profit from here and if we add that to the tooltip you'll see that when you do that you also see the kind of profit that's there sales versus profit you can also do that so again same as before let's create the sales chart let's grab the profits um from here there we go and i'm just going to and I like that, so you can bring that together. Uh, and let's then bring uh, the date, because you need the date, date over time. Let's expand that a bit. And there we go, sales versus profit. And again, all of these interact together. You can select any of these, and you can see how each of those interact. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know if you noticed that, if you select one of those, those two at the top get filtered out. But because this is a bar chart, you get highlighted. Can you change that? Yes, you can. So if you go to format, if you select this visual, and if you go to format, and if you select where it says edit interactions, you'll see that there's buttons at the top that tells you how it behaves. So this chart here at the moment is filtering this one, is filtering this one, and is highlighting this one. So if you change that to filter, you'll see that all of a sudden, when you select these, we're just gonna remove that again, you can then quickly change those accordingly. So you already got a quick dashboard for sales versus profit. You got sales at the top. So this is a very, very, very quick and dirty show of what Power BI can do. There's all sorts of weird and wonderful things you can do with Power BI. But as you can see, to get started, it took me the least of 10 minutes to drag these and create a quick visualization for this. Of course, you can automate this with the help of slices. So if you use Excel before, you know what slices do. So if you want to bring a slicer into this presentation, you can quickly add the button to it. Say you wanted to have... I don't know, let's bring product into it, Azure product. Okay, so you wanted to have a look at this. Obviously, you know, once you, you organize it, you can you can quickly drop in and put it whenever you want. Uh, but let's have a look, a look at this. So if you were to select it, you'll see that all of a sudden, all of these, they comply with the slices that you've added there. And this obviously depends on how you set up your interactions, but it's a quick and easy way of creating high level filters for this. And you can set this either as a list or you can set it as a drop down. There's your drop down there, there's your items. Um, the other really cool thing is that you could set this as a bar at the top. So if you select your slicer and if you go to, uh, sorry, let me just see if I can quickly remember this. Uh, I think it's under general. Ah, here we go, horizontal. There we go. So if you wanted to have like a, a button at the top that says, this is how I want it to show. There we go. There's your button and you can select your items. As simple as that. I um, hope that makes sense and hope that gave you a quick insight into how to work with Power BI. So bearing in mind all of this, this was connecting to a very sample data set, 
But you can connect to data warehouses, and again, the data will show in the same way, and you can connect your data sets in, in, in various ways. So say, for example, you've got a fact table, you've got a date table that you, or, or, or a dimension table that gives you various dimensions, you can do all that. The only thing you need to do is add more data. And when you get more data, you can connect them, and all of your tables will interact accordingly. So we get to the next stage, which is Q&A. So if I quickly, uh, there's no need to change that. I'm just going to hop onto it. Um, has anyone got any questions? Stunned silence, I see. <laughs> questions, please. Um, yeah. Hi there, um, it's Ali Horman. Once you've got your data in, yeah. If you needed to make any kind of on-the-fly um, recalculations or add any new, mm -hmm. thing, can you do that in here? Absolutely. So if you need, so this is your base data, but if you need to create calculations for it, if you right click on your table, there's an option there to create a new measure or a new column. Okay. And this is where, and this is where you need to have a look into the DAX language. DAX language is what allows you to create measures or columns. Uh, and this is where it gets interesting, like creating percentages, creating variations, creating differences between various, various fields. So yes, once you've added your data, yes, you can absolutely create that. That's not a problem. Thank you. The, so the, the DAX language, is, is that similar to... Um... Very similar to Excel, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay, thank you. Um, it's Abby here. I had a question as well. Hello. Good morning. Um, hello. So I was just going to ask, um, is there a way, I've got kind of what, two questions, to yeah. change um, like the size of the kind of screen? So if you uh, wanted to put, say, more graphs in at that size, sure. um, can you change that or not? Absolutely. So if you tap anywhere on on there's not a visualization, you'll see that you've got a format um, option there. And if you go to page size, you can change it. At the moment, it's set by 16 by 9, um, which is the default size. But if you go to custom, you can adjust it to a width and a height, uh, and then you can just set up to your needs. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, that's really helpful. And then the other question I was going to ask was, mm -hmm. so it's, it seems like, yeah, it's really great for visualizations mm -hmm. um, and charts, graphs, that kind of thing. Um, but I was having a little play around and I, I, I was trying to kind of create tables. Um, yep. and it didn't seem so great for tables. I didn't know if that's just... <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you're not going to like the answer that I'm going to give you. Unfortunately, it's the only answer that I can give you. Um, Power BI is not great at tables. And this is okay. where pre-planning comes into play. So say for example, and again, I'm gonna quickly show you this. Um, let's create a table that contains sales by month. Okay, so let's drop a, a, a matrix because that gives you more dimensions to play with. So let's drop the under values, let's drop sales. And as you can see, we've got a, a date here. So the date gives you an hierarchy to play with. So say we wanted to say, we wanted to put a year under rows and the month under columns. Um, and all of a sudden you've got like a specific size for a table and you know it's always going to maintain this size. And I think it might have been the problem that you found is that, you know, depending on your data, table sizes change uh, and it's really hard to maintain them. Um, you can also remove the subtotals from a table if that makes it easy to read. But yes, unfortunately, despite the fact that it resizes itself, Power BI is at the moment, it, it sort of lacks a bit in the table department. Um, but by having sort of, fixed sizes for your field. So if you know there's always going to be, you know, 12 fields at the top that contains your months rather than having like a financial year, for example, and the only thing that's going to expand is going to be your years as data gets added, it is sort of, you know, you're um, preventing the, the problem of extending the table. But that's that's pretty much the only advice I can give you at the moment. Sort of plan your table and see how, how best to display it. Okay, that's really helpful. Thanks. And then I just kind of thought another que about another question along that mm -hmm. line. And um, was so say for example you wanted to click on something in one of the graphs or charts, and then mm -hmm. and then you wanted it to kind of filter the other charts as well, but you didn't want it to change the table. Is there mm -hmm. a way to do that? Oh, I see. So if you wanted to use a chart and all the other charts do it, but you don't want the table to change accordingly, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So you don't want the table to interact with the rest of it. That's fine. Again, it's the same. It's the same way I've said before. So, okay. Say for example that any interaction on this chart doesn't affect the table. So if you go to that and to format and go to edit interactions, you'll see that again it gives you that option. So you'll see this visual is currently interacting with all the other visuals at filtering level, and same with the table. But if you press over there whenever you select any of these, it's going to interact with everything except for that table. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Really helpful. No worries. Anyone else? 
Um, just a, just a quick one. Um, yeah. It, I, and I assume this is um, the tabs work like Excel. So if you just wanted to add extra um, pages of, of, of visualizations, you just um, click on the on the plus button at the bottom there, and you just create a new tab. Absolutely. Okay. That and then you just literally navigate through them by clicking Correct. on each. Tab. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's okay. that's that's as easy as that. Okay. Um, is it is it fairly quick to kind of build up your knowledge with with the various um, tools in here? Just by um, a little bit. Um, I will say it really depends. It's it's like imagine you're learning a language and you 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 know for a little bit of time, say two three weeks, you you really get invested on it and you become really good with it. But it depends how often you use this. Um, so this, for example, is my bread and butter. I use this on a regular basis. So I had to find ways and means to do various things. And as you do that, like like all of us, you get curious and you, you find all new ways of doing it and you become really quick at it and find shortcuts. Um, so it, it really depends how often you use this tool. Is it easy to understand? Yeah, Power BI is quite intuitive. And, and the moment you, you get more familiar with it, all of this and, and where things are become more, it, it becomes second nature. Um, so I think it's quite an easy tool to understand, but it just depends how regularly you use it. Okay. Um, um, is, is there any functionality in here for kind of more statistical kind of base stuff or is that the stuff that you'd probably do before you brought your data, your data in? Um, no, like like someone asked before, you can create fields in, in, in which case then you can start bringing, you can start using formulas to build your statistical stuff. So, for example, if you were to do an SPC chart, that's easily done. And I can show you in a bit something along those lines. Um, so, yeah, Power BI totally supports that. If you want to include it in the model before importing it, that's absolutely fine, too. But by by allowing yourself to bring the data and then building that stuff, it means that you also start getting more familiar with it. Yeah. So there's a lot of statistical stuff you can do with it. And yes, including deviation and standard deviation. And again, SPC charts. Yeah. So that's that's not an issue. Power BI deals with that easily. Right. Thanks. That's really helpful. Thank you. No worries. Any more questions? I assume that's not the case. So thank you very much for all of those. They were really, really insightful. Um, I think, uh, let me just quickly check where I am on my presentation. Um, so uh, my apologies, I should have clicked from there. Um, so we've done Q&A. Um, and so, like I said before, there is an appendix and I'll drop the presentation here. I'm not gonna go through it, but there's a ton of useful information here, including compatibility with SSRS. Um, there's a bit of uh, a bit of um, documentation about the REST API, which is really useful and allows you to automate a lot of stuff that you do in Power BI. Um, there is um, I go in, in more in depth into what data import, the pros and cons, direct query, and live connections in terms of pros and cons of each of them. And in the end, there's also a list of resources that I find quite useful. So there's the the, the server server optimized download link. Um, there's a Udemy course if if you got a license for it. There's a link to the REST API. There's some sample data for you to play with. Um, if you're into mapping and if you work with uh, CCG, STP boundaries, LSOAs, etc., there's a link to boundary files and how to use them. And there's also a mapping conversion tool to convert the shape files into topo JSON files that Power BI uses. And last but not least, a link to our insights. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is. Um, a quick demo or a quick example of what you can achieve with Power BI once you get more familiar with it and the sort of stuff that you can do with it. So I'll quickly bring up uh, one of the reports that I'm working with at the moment. Uh, sorry, my apologies. This is what happens when you're doing live. You forget some things and all of a sudden they don't work. Sorry. Uh, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm using a flag to put the Power BI report into full screen. It's probably going to take ages to load now. Um, in the meantime, whilst this loads, because the file is quite big, um, did everyone find this session useful? And the other thing that I will say is if you have any more questions for me or if there's anything that you'd like to get into and, and discuss it, uh, I'm always available on Teams to, to show you around. That's not a problem. So um, do you think this session was useful? Um, yes, it, it was really useful for me. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, it's really helpful just to um, kind of yeah go through it again. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, right. that's from my from my point of view, this is the first time I've had a, like a proper run through um, mm -hmm. in a more formal way. So yeah, that, it's been really helpful. Thanks very much. Awesome, that's good to know. So I'm just waiting for this to load. Hopefully, it won't take too long. I was hoping. Uh, it's still doing a little thing over there at the top. <clears throat> Uh, 
Of course, in in, in typical fashion, uh, when you want things to load really quickly, they decide, no, today is not the day for it. There we go. Um, so this is a tool that encompasses, and, and this, this is where it gets really interesting. This is a tool that encompasses about uh, 15 um, different data sets with data interconnected between them. And that also includes two fact tables that connects organizations, STPs, and a custom date table that gives you more control over your time intelligence. So the sort of things that you can do with Power BI, it allows you to create customized pages, menus. Um, it allows you to create a more um, interactive way of navigating your reports. Bearing in mind at the moment, this sits as a, pro a prototype stage. It, it's still very much missing some information. Um, but as you can see, it, it, you can customize the, the way it displays um, to your own needs. So as you can see, there's no navigation at the bottom. We've taken away all that. Um, and the way you navigate it is by clicking over there at the top and by navigating to all of these. So if you don't want to go into each of these, um, this is the sort of stuff that you can achieve with Power BI. So for example, you can have benchmarks and KPIs with targets. You can have cards that display at a glance information as of the latest month, uh, once this loads. <laughs> there we go. Um, so as you can see, this is a very complex page that contains uh, connection to at least three data sets uh, and encompasses, like you say, um, various visualizations to, to just demonstrate information at a glance. So you can see there's the various uh, measures that we're taking into account. There's a green line that demonstrates what the target is, and there's cards that show you what the data is as ads with a target, if that's one. Um, there's also a way to show like a, a filter bar, and there's also a way to um, over uh, the swap between the detail and core information. And again, each of these is completely fully interactable. You can select your measures from a list, and all of these change to then reflect each of those measures. So I'm just going to take that away. <clears throat> um, so again, um, all of these have got um, a ton of backing data. Um, and like I said, this is quite a big file. And this is why it took so long to load. I think at the moment it's sitting at 350 megabytes. But really, depending on how fast your connection is, you should be able to then use it accordingly. So this is what Power BI can do. This is the sort of thing you should be able to achieve. Um, and yes, it, it will hopefully improve the way you display reports and create reports for yourself. Thank you very much. Hi, Bruno. Hello again. Hi. I just want to say thank you for this. Um, you know, you've already heard how useful it's been mm. <laughs> to everyone on the uh, meeting, so to speak. Um, the upgrades to the Power BI that you mentioned when they do mm -hmm. new releases and new features, that's carried out on the server on a regular basis. Um, and uh, user machines, I think what they do now is to put in a top desk call yeah. and uh, then we will assign it to the relevant team mm -hmm. and uh, the upgrade is then applied to the client PC. Mm -hmm. So that's the way we do that. Um, and um, is there anything else we need to know with respect, respect oh. to the software or... So yeah, so um, like you said at the moment, um, or, or like I mentioned before, um, Power BI report server gets updated on a quarterly basis, and you're absolutely right. If you want to take advantage of the, the latest and greatest, you sort of have to keep on top of how, how up-to-date is the report server. Uh, we're hoping that in the future, and again, completely correct me if I'm wrong, that um, it can be included and be disseminated automatically by your um, software distribution kit. Um, but that's the hope for the future. I don't know if that's been taken into, into account at the moment. That's absolutely right. The server mm -hmm. is uh, updated on a regular basis, but mm -hmm. the rollout to the client PCs, we're still yeah. in the process of getting that uh, to be okay. rolled out automatically. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of um, access and being able to create reports, I would imagine mm -hmm. the users need access to the underlying databases. Correct. But that is uh, granted on a separate basis and mm -hmm. uh, goes through a whole process of line manager approval mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, product manager approval, which I guess you users are familiar with. Um, sorry, uh, Alison, was that a question directed at? Oh, okay. Is directed yeah, Alison <laughs> or um, Abby, you 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 do know that you request how or how you go about requesting access to a um, database. Yes, yeah. You yeah, have the process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lovely. So, 
there's I would I would just mention there's two things to to bear in mind when doing this. So yes, if you want to use data from the warehouse, you you'll need obviously access to that specific data. Um, but there's also the fact that if if it's if it's data that requires specific permissions, when you publish this report, um, despite the fact that the users might have access to the report, they won't have access to the underlying data until you set up role level security groups. Um, so in Power BI, there's an option to do that, uh, and this is where you specify. Uh, the various groups, you, you name a group and you say this group has got access to this specific field depending on this column name. So for example, say your data has got organization code. Yeah. And for example, it's you're, you're providing data for 15C, uh, I think it's BNSSG. Uh, in which case then you say BNSSG has got access to data based on this column and then this column equals 15C. And then when publishing this report, there needs to also be a product group um, that contains that specific one. So it, it is initially it is quite a bit of work, but once that's done, that means that anyone accessing the report will only see that data. And unless you do that, you won't be able to see anything. The report will just say you'll need to request permission from the data um, the data holder in order to access the report. So do bear that in mind when creating reports with data that requires specific permissions. Okay, so. So when we get to the stage of like if we do end up publishing reports, mm -hmm. um, would we be able to get into contact with you just to go over those bits again? Because um, yeah, obviously, absolutely. Obviously, at the moment, um, if we were to publish them for users that aren't in the BI team, none of them have access to any of, for example, any of the SQL databases. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it'd be great just to go. Can I just interrupt there? Yeah. Uh, there is a level of security within Power BI which runs independently of uh, the databases um, in, a, in a sense. We have security groups and by using security groups we can restrict um, users, particular groups of users, restrict them from having access to sets of records. So you might create a set of reports, for example, which you want user group A to see, but not user group B. So things like that are managed within security in Power BI. And that again, the setting up of those groups and the allocating of uh, 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 permissions to see, to view those reports mm -hmm. is again handled by uh, via a top desk call. So if you have any queries regarding that, you can always get in touch either with Tom or get in touch with myself and we can sort the um, groups out for you in Power BI. Okay, thank you. All right, and um, uh, Bruno, were you saying mm -hmm. what you just said right now about making a specific column uh, yeah. visible to users? Is that uh, is that what you were meant? Is that what you meant? No, no, no. It's, it's not making a specific column. It's based on a column. But yeah, it's exactly what I meant. So, like you said, obviously you need the creation of groups that will come via via the top desk team, where you create the various groups yeah. for for that. But also within Power BI, you can uh, give users access to the data based on data on a column. So, like I said, if there is a column that contains your organization codes. You can yeah. say the organization 50C will access this data if columns column this column is equal 15C. So the sure. data that will only display to 15C is if, you know, depending on this column. So yeah, that, that's what I was meaning. Yeah, so yeah, is that correct then? There are two ways of doing this. One is no, via no, no, the need AD both, groups. You need both ways. Both you of them. To, you okay. need both ways. Both things need to happen in order for, for the data to be displayed to the end user. Perfect, perfect. Because once you create the groups within Power BI, you need to associate those groups in Power BI report server with the PG group. Yes, so, yeah. correct, correct. <laughs> the other thing uh, I was going to say quickly is mm -hmm. when you create reports, when the developers create reports, Abby, Allison, and perhaps Jeffrey, mm -hmm. um, the plan is to have them reviewed before they are published. Is that how you work, Bruno? Yes, correct. So um, the first thing is uh, you need to to check with Tom if if you got access to the to the developer and production server, um, and once that is the case, then yes, we'll be checking the reports and seeing if they're you know if if they're compliant and everything's working, etc. And then then we can decide if they're going to be going into production. So yeah, you're absolutely okay. right. But first, you need access, and then yeah, in which case, just yeah. come and talk to us. And the other important thing I'd like to stress is we will do all development in the development environment for which we have a development mm -hmm. server. Yeah, we do. And only once the reports have been reviewed and we've got the thumbs up, that's the only time when they get published by a set group of publishers to the production server. 
So that's that's why we've uh, provided a development environment as well as mm -hmm. a production environment. Absolutely. Is there anything else we need to bring up? No, don't, not from my point of view, thank you. I was going to ask the, um, so the Power BI dashboard um, that you showed us just now, is there any way we can we can get access to that or is, would that not be possible just for like an example that we can look at in the future? Um, yes, you'll be able to get access to this as as hopefully when it gets published, but not for the time being as it, it is very much a prototype tool. Um, but once it does get published, it will be under insights and under the mental health um, thing. And we're hoping to get it published, and I'm guessing this is what you're going to ask next. Uh, we're hoping to get it published um, by the end of April, beginning of May, something along those lines. <clears throat> okay, thank you. No worries. And if that is all, um, I hope this was a useful session, and thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, I, I enjoy myself um, showing this to you. Um, I'm very, very excited about what Power BI can do. It's been, it's been quite interesting, and it's been a hell of a trip. So thank you very much for coming, and thanks, Philip, for organizing it.